Hi, Joe here over at woollycottage.com, back to basics. I think it's 21 we're on on. Um, no doubt you'll see it pop up on the screen in a bit. Um, right, so the fortnight ago we did back to basics video where I was spinning and I was doing a little bit of auto winding, but I just left it as a single and I did the swatch of it. So this week I've already spun up a small bobbin. I haven't done any control on this yarn. I'm just doing it as a demo, okay? So there's thick and thin bits, but I'm going to apply it. And at the end of the day, the way I see it is some of you guys are new to spinning and you don't have to be perfect all the time when you're trying stuff out for the first time, okay? So it's a bit thick and thin. It'll do. It's just for demo. And I want to show you as well that you can still use it afterwards. So what I've done is I've got some more wool here that we're going to spin and at the same time I've got some of this acrylic and it's got a bit of sparkle in there it's got some stellina in it so I'm using this so you can see it a bit better this time round it's not as thin as the last stuff I used and then we're going to apply it up and then you can see the effects that you get if you were to apply it instead of just using it as a singles it creates a different sort of look when you're applying it I'm not going to be doing any coarse spinning or anything like that I'm just going to be literally applying the two yarns together as you would do so you can see what it looks like if you want to do it as applied yarn. Okay, so that's really it today. Um, so I'll catch you as we're going along. So like we did last time, we threaded through, we opened up the loop on our leader yarns that goes and attaches itself to the bobbin. You feed that through the flyers and then back out through your orifice, okay? Then you open up your loop because usually a double loop that you've got, put in, your secondary thread that's just going to be dangling or you might want to control it is up to you but I'll do both style, styles so you can see okay let me just see if I could tilt this down a little bit more one second I know Joe you're not professional you could have sorted this out earlier <laughs> all right so I'm just going to get my wheel started I've got this really lumpy knot here in the middle, so I want to try and get that wound on first before we even start, because otherwise Joe ends up in a right old model. I'll get that over there, and we'll see how we go first. So I'm just going to loosen off my tension a little and start applying. Now, you can see the fibres just rolling itself up and down. I'm just leaving that and hanging there while I concentrate for the moment on getting this started. There we go. Now, it's having a moment. Bear with me. Right, so at the moment it's all winding. Well, it's supposed to be. Oh dear, it's on the back. I've just took the bobbin off to, um, that's all it is. It's just the tension in the back's not wanting to draft. Pull it in, there we go. Should be, fingers crossed, done now. So I'm just gonna pull this forward so it meets up and I'm gonna hold it for a little bit and just guide it along my fibers. See, right there in between the fingers like I did the other week and just guide it along and hold it so it follows my fibre when I'm spinning it and just wraps around so I've got a little bit of control again through my fingers and just keep spinning it like that spin up my roving at the same time I feel like I'm on the fight though so I'm just going to pull down the tension a little bit on my bobbin there we go that feels a bit more natural you just want to tweak with your tension on your scotch tension or your irish tension a little bit it feels like you're you're fighting in the sense of it's wanting to pull it out of your hand where you're treadling it should be a smooth action when you're spinning you shouldn't feel like you're at war with it so i'm just going to twist my roving around a little bit so it's just snagged off that's fine. I'm just going to pinch the piece here and let the energy catch up with that. There we go. And start again. Okay. So what I'm going to do now 
I'm going to actually just pull this because it's a massive thick piece of roving. So I'm just going to split that and put that to one side for now because we can fit off and shut off in a minute. And I leave my hand open so that the fibre, the secondary fibre that's wrapping itself around the auto winding part of the thread, this one, so that it can just flow through. If I was to do that, then it doesn't feel comfortable. It doesn't feel natural. But then maybe you feel comfortable doing that. But I'm quite happy doing it like that. And it's flown through. So this secondary yarn is sitting on my index finger and it's sitting through the other bit my pinky finger at the back i'm just gonna move on my flyer arm to the next one the hook and then i'm going to let go of that yarn and i'm just going to concentrate on drafting my fibers out and i'm going to let it just dangle can you see that you can see it bouncing around And it's just doing its thing. It's not tight. It's, it's quite loose. And it will give, once that's spun up, you'll see the effect. It's quite loosey-goosey, a bit lumpy. Now it's backing on itself. That's fine. It's not a problem. And because it's going into the orifice, it sort of flips itself back into the direction it should be going in. So I'm quite happy with that. So we'll just keep on spinning this. And there it's rolling back on itself. That's all right. It's just giving yourself different effects. Let that go back in there and it will join back up here. Now, I'm getting quite long in, so what I'm going to do is spin that loosely and then flip it forward, backwards, and let it come back down on me. There we go. And back in again. And then backwards, forwards, just guide it with my finger. And there we go again. In you go. It's got far too much twist now and my thread has just got caught on my flyer hook that is not a problem just end up with lots of energy so if i just pull this back a little bit that will help that and come forward with this go back forward and i'm going to grip it with my finger again and let it just run through And just spin like that for a little while. Now, I put it in this finger hanging over this finger because if I was to run it through this finger here, my second finger, I'm sure I explained this last time, because the fibres are running down my hand, this will then pick up these fibres down here, okay? Can you see where that is? So it's behind my finger and on that one there, my, my middle finger. So because of where the fibres are, and I'm pinching up in the triangle here. It's going to catch and pull on these fibres that are loose down here. That's why I put it up here on the top of this finger, because that's where I want it to sit and catch on. OK, I want it to wrap around the top. I don't want it to pinch the fibres from underneath where I've got no control of it. There we go. So I'm just going to get my other piece that we split off and let that catch in there as well. And then that's joined. I'm just going to give that a few minutes and then I'm going to let it do its own little thing in the background. So tuck my fingers out from underneath it and you can see that twisting up. You can see it dangling. And it's doing a reverse wrap on there itself. 
bit of a reverse wrap again. Just have to be careful. You may it may snag on your hooks, on your flyer as you're going around, but just stop and, and untangle it and then start again. I'm just going to adjust my flyer arm again. There we go. And off. While well, it does its auto wrapping. Now you can do this technique for art yarns um, and do your thick and thin while you're doing the auto wrapping. If you want, I can do that on the next video and show you the effect that you get with a, a large thick and thin um, art yarn. Um, it looks quite nice, very effective. Oh, it's got tagged somewhere. There we go, found it. So if you'd like me to do that on the next Back to Basics so we can have three videos of this auto wrapping so you can see the different the different ways it affects your yarns and what it can look like, then let me know in the comments below and I will make sure I do that for the next Back to Basics video. And then we've got the auto wrapping theme all sorted and ticked off the box. So I'm going to hold this now because I've got this much left. So I'm going to put this back on my index finger so it's just lying there at the side of my yarn okay i'm gonna let it wrap around and i'm just going to guide that while i finish off this last piece and then we'll ply it together You can auto wrap with any type of um, thread. Try and make sure that it's thinner than, I say thinner, it doesn't really need to be thinner. Um, you can use a boucle wool that you might have in your stash from leftover from knitting with. Um, you might have sparkly um, fibers. You might have been able to get hold of some um, poly thread that is fluorescent. You can use anything, okay? I buy these cones from the charity shops because where I live, um, years ago, up until about 30 years ago, we had Kangol um, factory up in the next village over. We've had regatta factory. So there's lots of seamstresses and, and weavers and stuff like that around this area. It's quite industrialised in the fabric context and manufacturing of clothing. So I can quite happily find lots of these cones around where I live from people that have passed away and the, the stuff's all been sent off or or they're just having a really good clear out my mother-in-law's had a really good clear out this week it was brilliant it was like an aladdin's cave for me right so i'm just going to get my bobbins taken off i need to get a pair of scissors to snap this off because it's an acrylic and there's no way you can snap this this would originally been used for for making um trying to think of the word oh your pills and your tags from on your coats and stuff like that so it was a really thick cord um it's, it's definitely it's a corded thickness as well the way it's been put together so it would have been woven into some sort of belt or pull um or to toggle type things for on your coats so there's no way a man or woman can actually snap that so i'm going to go get myself sorted and i will catch you in a moment right so you just grab your yarns off your bobbins as you would do i'm lucky i've got my lazy kate on this wheel right here so i've got both my bobbins there and we've got my spare one on here i've had a mess around with tension make sure it's tight enough i'll probably have to adjust that again because i always make a habit of doing it a little bit too tight and then if i feel the flow is doing really nicely then i can i can adjust it if it feels like it's just pulling too much so this time i spun my wheel in that direction Okay, in the um <laughs> the anti-clockwise direction. Now I want to spin it in a clockwise direction so I can ply the threads together. Okay, so let's see. Are you gonna Okay, so I'm just gonna mess around with it a little bit just to get this knot through. Okay, so bear with me a second while I just get it going. 
you probably all have this problem. What it is, is I really need to get my backside in gear and um, change over my leader threads and put some new ones on, old in tatem. So I'm just going to turn the tension down a little bit and I'm just going to ply them together as I normally do. Oh, no, it's not happy. It wants a bit more tension in there. It's not happy. There we go. Come on. There we go. A bit more tension in there. A bit more. At this stage, I don't mind if it wants to pull it in my hand a little bit. Why do I feel like I'm arguing with it? It doesn't feel happy. It probably needs a really good maintenance job done on it, to be fair. Yeah, it's not, not one bit happy at all. Bear with me a second. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on with this bobbin. It doesn't want to play. But I'll persevere. We'll just keep on spinning this off and then you can see what results we've got in the end. And I'm just, as I say, I'm, I'm not giving it any extra twists. I'm just plying them both together, making sure that the energy disperses through as you would do normally. I just want to move my flyer on a bit. There we go, my hooks, and go again. You do sometimes have to watch out if you've got lumpy bits of threads, like uh, these sections here that may catch on your hooks if you've got hooks like me on your flyer. Sometimes they will snag on the hooks. There we go. It's flowing nicely. What would you use this type of yarn for with all these in through? Um, if you end up with a, a really good even yarn like you should do really and not like Joe's, <laughs> um, you can use it for all sorts. You can use it in your crochet, you can use it for your knitting, you can use it in your weaving. So yeah, it's um, not a yarn that says, oh, you can't do anything with me, but one job. It's something you can use in all your wool crafts. There we go. I'll probably have to adjust my flyer arm in a minute. And I'm about halfway down on my little bobbins. Yep, I'm just going to adjust my flyer arm. There we go. My wheel desperately needs maintenance job on it. I need desperately need a new drive band, and I need some. New, I've actually got a twine and, and strap spring for my wheel that needs replacing pretty urgently so does my other one as well they're both looking a little bit neglected i just genuinely don't have the time to sit and spin apart from doing my videos it's fill on people it's fill on there's always a job that i need to get on with or there's always work that i need to do from one week to prepare for the following week there's always something i've got to do done on these i'm going to move my flyer arm again and bring it down towards the front i haven't got much left on these right 
bring that down a little bit i don't know why but my my yarn keeps flying off the hook there we go Nice and relax. Just take your time. Once you the areas of the um the fiber that you've spun and you've actually guided it, it ends up looking a little bit like a candy stripe. the bottom there we go just about done and I think that's us that's it I need to just snag these out of place and do this one where are we at? I may have to get my scissors. Yeah, two ticks. I just have to grab my scissors. There we go. So, what we've ended up with is that I'll wind this up into a ball just on doing my tension. And I'll move my wheel right round. Oh. And I'll wind this into a ball in my hand and I'll show you the different sections. So we have these sections. That's the controlled area. See, it's really quite uniformed. And then we get to these bumpy bits like that and then we've got some more controlled area there and then one minute I'll just wind this up a little bit more then we have some sections where it lumps and bumps out of the fiber which is the areas where it's done its own thing loosen this up a little bit where it's done its own thing uh let's see what else we've got well, that's a good bit there is some more controlled section where it's just sat over the top of my index finger and you're at these little little sections of color just popping in and out like there See if we can find some of the um, lumpy, bumpy bits. A sec. Where it's um, crossed over on itself. When it's done its own auto winding on the back of it. When I've just let it have its, do its own thing. So there we go. So that is a part of the section where it's just wrapped back on itself. Now, it's not any control in it, but it does give you a nice effect, like there's lumps of colour. So when that's been knitted, you may see that is a little pop. There's another piece where it's done this exact same thing. There is an area that is all where it's auto wound on itself. And you've got this pretend boucle sort of look about it. And there's some more. I'll just wind that on. There we go. More sections there. Yeah. So it, it does give you a pretty effect if you want, if you've only got plain wool 
but you've got lots of um, cones of thin wool or a skein of say a lace weight wool that you, you don't know when you're ever going to use it. Um, you can use that for doing this auto winding as well. Just wind it up into a ball and then say for doing auto winding, there's some more sections there. So you've got this lumpy bits there and you've got these pops of threads coming out around. See like little hoops. And that's what you'll get if you just let the thread do its own thing on the back of the yarn as it's going in through the orifice. So I'm just going to go and rummage for my crochet hook and we will quickly do a swatch and see what it looks like as an overall effect. Okay. Oh, there we go. And that's it. So I'm just doing a crochet. It's just so much quicker for me to get these swatches done like this. Um, so I will just finish off this row and I will show you what it's looking like so far. But you'll see the difference if I can remember where that other swatch is. I could find it and um, show you what I mean about the difference comparison from that little one that we did the other fortnight ago with the singles into it being applied yarn. Um, and not having as much control over over the um, secondary fibre, the auto wrapped, whether you do auto wrapped or with a bit more control, you do get slightly different looks on your um, your work. Oh, lost me, lost my hand. There we go in there. So, on the second, nearly at the end, but halfway over. And I haven't once got tangled up, she says. She says, not yet. Tangled up in these uh, misdemeanor bits of lumpy threads that are sticking out neither. Definitely not noticed me getting caught up in it. So it's not really much of a hindrance to the work. Right. A couple more stitches and then you can see what it's looking like so far. There we go. I'll bring up closer so you can see a bit more better. So you can see where the auto wrapping has been done. And that sticks out a heck of a lot more when it's done in a yarn that you might want to knit with. But overall, if you just control it a little bit, you'll end up with this really lovely effect speckling through your hand spun yarn. And if you use the... Uh, a the secretary fibre as a hand dyed fibre that has got speckling effect through it then if you want to spin your yarns your fibres into a yarn using the more controlled method of the auto wrapping on there lean i.e leaving it over your finger and spinning and drafting with it then plying then you're going to get that speckled effect with different colours going all the way through without having to go through the process of dyeing it all after it's been spun because it's quite near impossible to do any type of speckling effect on a roving um, that you may want to spin with because it will modate or fade out compared to what you thought it was going to look like afterwards. So this could be your alternative to getting a speckled hand spun yarn is by using those lace weight yarns that you can buy from dyers that are really, really pretty, but you're like, I don't like using lace weight yarn. Well, get the lace weight yarn to do as a secondary ply fiber when you're doing auto wrapping and spinning up your yarn you only need to do it on one half of your single you don't have to do it on two i think doing it on two of them and plying them together would be too busy but if you used a a multicolored yarn with speckling and that sort of stuff on it um i suppose something like this where it's got the different colors on there they would pop through just an example of of dyed yarn that's to hand 
and then it would give you that lovely different coloured look all the way through your fibre. So I'll catch you on the other side. I'm nearly finished with this and we'll show you the overall look of the swatch. Okay. Okay, so there we go. There is my crochet sample of my auto wrapped and auto wrap guided. So you're just literally, essentially, is you just letting the fiber find its own path when you're when you're drafting out your fibers to spin up your singles, right? Um, or you can just guide it along so it stays consistent all the way through, which I think is the better version for doing this. If it was doing an art yarn, I think the auto wrapping and just leaving it hanging is the better option, but we'll see. So there we go. There is, and you can see those are the more controlled areas. And then if you look on the back, there are the boucle bits, the bits that stick out and pop out, which I don't think is practical if you're doing a knitted jumper or a crocheted blanket. I don't think they're practical at all. But you might want that effect. Oh, my blinking, my label's just falling off. Um, this is the one that we did a fortnight ago. And that was on the singles. And you can just about make out the little bits of thin fibre on there which I think is a lot more subtle. So there you go. That's two samples. So if you want me to do the auto wrapping again, but on for a art yarn, so you can see what it looks like with the effects when the fibres are thick and thin fibres are all starting to traverse around each other. Let me know in the comments down below and I will do that video in a fortnight's time. I think it'll be a really good comparison so you can see all three different effects of what the fiber can do but from singles to plied to art yarn doing that auto wrapping theme and then we've got them out the way it saves me having to come back and go over it again maybe in six months time when somebody asks me for that information okay so i think that's about it for now i shall be back next wednesday for a live chat um wednesday usually about half past 12 for my lunchtime live chat. You'll find me over on Instagram as well, um, usually every Saturday afternoon about half past 12. Um, but you can also come over and find me over on Patreon. I started releasing videos over there on Patreon for members only. Um, Storyteller Art Bats, the last video for that one is this weekend and we've currently got a vote going on, suggestions for the next Colourways um, collection for the Storyteller Art Bats and it'll be Dye Pot Thursday next week, which you guys on YouTube will see that video, but it will be a short and condensed version with the music over. So you can see what it is I'm doing just to give you a little sneak peek um, to come over and pop over. You get a seven day free trial and you can either support pay, uh, support Willie Cottage over on Patreon by a three pound a month or five pounds a month. Five pounds a month is the Fluffers um, tier and they get first access to the videos and then about a week later the £30 version uh, tier gets the access after them and then eventually down the line it will end up on YouTube either slightly edited or you'll just have to wait about six months for them so if you want access to me blending and my tips and tricks and Q&A's ask them questions things that you may be not sure about then you can come over there and find me on there over at patreon.com forward slash Willie Cottage so take care of yourselves be good, be careful. Take uh, Winter willies still need to be kept out. We're down to minus eight, minus ten in parts of the country next week. So hold on to those. Right, I'm off. See you now. Toodle pips.